This can be a really fun exercise to work on your pentatonic scales and I'm not going to go into that in too much depth now because it'll take too long and I've done that in other videos. Go to my playlist and look up um, modal scales or modal playing and you'll uh, pentatonic scales you'll find that but just as an example for the first one the G minor 9 now I can use the B flat pentatonic starting on its second step like this that picks up the seventh and the, the, the minor third of the G minor or I could use an F pentatonic starting in the second mode would accentuate the ninth it would have that sus in there too. Now on the C7 I'm thinking I'd use the second mode of, of the C pentatonic like like that. You have, now these pentatonic scales allow you to have these intervals of fourths, you know, like that. So it can be a lot different than bebop playing where you're playing more chromatically. This can be, you know, spread out more and when you mix it up with a variety of different moves it can be really great sounding. You see so you can really get good at, uh, you know, like me, that kind of thing. Knowing your pentatonics, you know. You know. That kind of thing. talk a little bit about the scales that I use for improvisation. Um, now on the C7 this is going up in half steps all the way through the 12 keys but then you can put the 2 chord in front of the 5 or you can put the 5 in front of the 2 any way you like but for the backing track I just use C7 for 8 measures and then D flat 7 for 8 measures. That allowed the bass player to play more linear and to be freer 
and it sounds great even with the 2-5. It doesn't have to be hitting the G root, you know, on whatever measure you're hitting it on, and the C root on, you know, in other words, it frees up the bass player and it's going to sound better. So that's why I wrote it that way when you read the backing track. But now the voicings for the G minor here or here. This is the B form, this is the A form. Now that comes from John Mahegan's books and it's what I use. It's, it's like modern rootless voicings for a piano, you know. And you get the 2-5 with just very easy moves and so on. Now the scale, Mixolydian, just means it's the fifth step of a major scale. So the major scale is F. So you see F has the one flat. So when you play the starting on C, you're going to play that one flat, and that gives you the C7 sound, right? That's the appropriate chord. I mean, appropriate scale for that chord. Now, and it has the ninth in it too. So the other scale you can use is the Lydian flat seven. Now that Lydian means it's the fourth step of a major scale. So it'd be G. G major, so you see you'd have the F sharp in there with the B flat now. You should have those two scales. And the way they work is that, um, well, often that note is good because it's going to approach there, the fifth, right? And this note is good because it's going to approach the third, you know. So they both are passing tones in a sense. And the other one would be you could use the flat three to the three, like maybe something like that would be a lick, you know. Now over here also the leading tone is always usable, you know. You see, that's how I'm getting melodies is using those approach tones and passing tones. I'm using the scale as a means to an end, but the approach tones and target tones are more important. You want to hit the target tone on a strong beat. You know? You know, something like that. But Now, one distinction you might say, the question might be, well, if I'm playing those two scales, then how does that relate to the G minor 7? Well, it has to do with the target tones. In a G minor 7, Let's take the primary target tones, the root, third, fifth, seventh. Now, how does that relate to C? Well, the root of G is the fifth of C, so that's fine, it's the target tone. The minor third of the G minor seven chord is the flat seven of the C chord, so that works fine. The fifth works fine because it's the ninth, but now when we get up here to the seventh, that's not a target tone for F, I mean for the key of C. It's more of a passing tone. Functions more as a passing tone. It can be a target tone, but you're going to use it more as a, you know, one and two and three, you know, like that. It's going to be passing. So same thing with the C7 now. You take the target tones. That's the fourth of the G minor, so it's going to be a passing tone in G minor. That's the sixth. That's going to be a passing tone in G minor. There's the root there, so that's a target tone. There's the minor third, so that's the target tone. Those are target tones, and these are passing tones in G minor, but they're all target tones in C7. I hope I'm not going too fast for you, but this, this is something that um, is important to understand if you're going to be playing, say, melodically, you know, and using appropriate target tones, appropriate passing tones in the right places, you know, strong beat, you want a target tone. Now, this is just general improvisation. This is not advanced. When I get into more chromatic playing, you'll see that um, any note is possible, really. But you want to know this, this essential kind of information first and start with that. Start simple.
example of chromatic two fives would be in the tune Aerogen by Sonny Rollins. It starts out in F minor. F minor. Then mm, B flat minor. And then it goes to D flat major. Then it goes D minor seven, a two five one into C major seven, then a two five one into C flat major seven, then a two five one into B flat major seven, then a two five one into A flat. You see, so you have those two five ones moving chromatically, so you can have here's the C, and here's the D flat, and then here's the B flat. So you could have, uh, you know, you see that's complementary lines. You don't need that, but I mean, it's just showing you how the benefits of being able to maneuver in those in, in chromatic scales like that two five ones. You know, it's really this is really the C scale. This is really the B scale. This is really the B flat scale. You see, so and then another one. You know, let's just try. how that being that exercise is going to help you to be able to play these kind of tunes with more fluidity and smoother and really knowing your scales and how to maneuver through them. I want to take a minute to show you the cover of my book and explain a little bit because people who bought my book they always say write to me and say could you do more lessons from the book taken from the book so this lesson is taken from the book Here's the cover. It's in a three ring binder. Now, I thought, gave a lot of thought into this, spent many years putting this material together, but I thought about how would I like a book to be laid out? And I would like it to be laid out so it would lie flat on the music stand and I could take pages out easy to photocopy them because I always have difficulty with that. So I figured that out, putting it into a three ring binder. Now, Volume 1, Volume 2. In Volume 2 you have the rootless voicings. These are the voicings I used on this video. So that I have the various positions here for the A and B for him. Here, here they are, the four positions. And now you have the A form. This is the second inversion. Then you have the B, the B form. All laid out for you in two five ones. And then in addition I apply them to songs that you can play and also solos. Then I have all this subject matter on improvisation that's going to help you with this, with the improv part of this, as well as easier improvisation. This is the more advanced concepts. And then I have bebop exercises as well. So you have a little bit of everything here. Everything that I would have wanted to have in, when I was trying to learn how to play jazz and how I learned it over the years by hard work, now I'm giving it to you in, in, all in a book. And you can't learn just from a book. You have to go out to clubs. You have to listen to musicians. You have to listen to recordings. You have to uh, do a lot of things besides this. But this is going to be a good resource, resource for you to study along with my videos. I should also mention that I always use a sliding scale for this book. In other words, if you can't afford it, just write to me and I'll give you the book. Or if, or if you need a discount, I'll give you a discount. I want this to be available to anyone that wants it and is serious about that.